Welcome to this uh, working uh, session of the Geographical Schemes uh, Interest Group. My name is uh, Paco Pando. I work at the Royal Botanical Garden in Madrid, Spain, and I'm also the, and the, the GBF node manager for Spain. And I've been involved in that work for a number of years now. I am not familiar with um, how much background you, do you have, on, you have on, on this standard, so I will make a, a very short introduction. And for this, I'm going to share my US screen. I don't have um, a presentation, but I will take you to some websites and so on, all the presentations that are anyway available from the GitHub site. So I start to share screen. And hopefully you are now. Looking at the, at the interest group um, space in the GitHub. Uh, the the rational and the origin of, of this. I'm oh, sorry. I have to to reshare the the screen. Okay, much better. Uh, can you see my screen? Great. So the the rational and the and the origin of of this of this interest group uh, resides in a, in a prior that we standard. That was the, the World uh, Geographical Schema Frequent Plan Distribution. The, the second edition of this standard was published around uh, 2001, if I don't remember, if I remember rightly. And it is one of the most successful standards of that week. Nevertheless, in 20 years time, it is time for updating this standard. There was interest in, in, two, in two directions. First, to cover not just plants, but all uh, living beings. And second, to cover as well, this, this uh, second edition was restricted to the terrestrial domain. And the, the idea with this updating it was also to, to cover the marine domain. And, and for this, we make a, um, some conversations, especially between Bisotri uh, Ang from the Museo Nacional Estudio Natural, Italy, uh, Nicola Bailey, uh, Fish Base, uh, Vancouver, and, and myself. And uh, the, arrangement, the arrangement was that uh, Nicola was taking care of the, the uh, marine domain because of his background and experience, and I will take over the the terrestrial domain. I was involved in the preparation of the, of the second edition of the standard, so I was already familiar with the principles of this standard, but we are going to do this uh, in very shortly. First thing, uh, this is not uh, a pure uh, biogeographical standard. The rules are, first, it is a hierarchical schema, the, the limits in the regions are either uh, coast and administrative uh, boundaries. And the idea is to get uh, a system of comparable areas. And this, and uh, for this, uh, four levels were uh, delimited. The first level is a continental level. The second is subcontinental level. The third is what it is called in the standard botanical countries. And, and the fourth is just to take uh, care of small units and, and islands. Um, so with, with this in, in mind, we uh, around a year and a half ago, um, we set up the, the web space and set an issues that we identify a small group of people mostly based in Spain and mostly related to, 
to give you spin, but not only. And here in the, I'm going to put this into in the, in the chat. So where the, the, the issues that we identify with, with issues, we mean the, the boundaries that have changed, so the countries that have changed names, so well, any, any change either in the name of the unit or the, the delimitation of the units. And we can across 22 issues in total. We have solved all of them, but one. And we can solve it pretty, pretty easily. By solve, meaning that we reach a kind of agreement on how to, to move forward. And uh, last part of my presentation is um, the slide that we presented in the, well, two, three weeks ago in, in Sofia meeting in, in Talwit. So conveners, the objectives, the work done, the issues already going through, and where we are now. Since in, in, in Talwit, um, way of doing things, there are two levels, the, inter the interest groups and the task groups. The interest groups is just a kind of a loose gathering of people interested in a topic but it is the task group that really do the work, that really produce the standards or the, the updating of the standard or the maintenance, things very specific. And we have reached this limit with the terrestrial domain of this standard. So uh, we are going to propose the creation of a task group. And within uh, this task, task group, the idea is to generate the, the documentation in the task week format, meaning the the SDS, the standard documentation standard. Basically, this, this standard is a control vocabulary. It's a, it's a list of terms related to a number of units. But in this context, if we restrict ourselves to, to just the vocabulary, we, I think we think that we will be short of making anything useful. So we have to consider as well other ancillary materials such as maps or list of changes and things like that. And with this, I stop talking and let's open the, the group for, for discussion, questions, ideas, suggestions. So you turn. Please introduce yourself before uh, talking. So not just for, for us, but also for the, the recording. So, anyone wants to, to break the ice? Hello, I'm Vijay Barwe. I uh, recently started working on some marine data, so I'm keen to know when will the marine stuff start? Well, uh, I, I'm not into the details of what uh, the people are, have been doing in the marine domain, but I can tell you that the, the principles and the, 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 the principles for, for the marine domain was in, or are in some way to follow the same principles as in the terrestrial domain, meaning that the first level uh, of units will be related to the to the maritime uh, economic zones of the countries so that is that will be the the, the first division and and then a number of options has been uh, mentioned for dealing with the the known uh, the, the areas in the sea not connected to countries but the, mm -hmm. the, the first step is just go through the the economical uh, zones of the countries okay so uh, Nicholas is the person to talk more about this. Not recently. I I was telling to to Holly before starting the session that we haven't heard of him in in the in in a, in a few months now. So okay. So I will talk to him and figure out because oh, I meet him excellent. once in a while. So excellent. So do so yeah. and yeah, help to move things forward. Thank mm -hmm. you.
I have a question. I'm yes. uh, Matthew Blissett from Thank the you. Chief of Secretariat. I've not been involved with any of the standards development on this before, um, but I am involved in GBIF on interpreting our data according to things like this uh, this standard I've been asked to do the, the current one. Um, there's a set of polygons for download, um, but they're quite low risk. Yes, that, that, is, that is something to update, yeah. That, um, yep. Do you know what source you'd use for new polygons? We, we, we haven't decided it yet, and we work on ideas. Um, yeah, I, I have a similar thing which is going to go live within the next, I don't know, few weeks. I'm not exactly uh -huh. sure when, um, but it's a continent of view on GBIF. Um, and I just, I couldn't find polygons for continents. Oh. Um, anyway, you can find ones where they've chopped up Russia by easily just saying, oh, this oblast is here and this one's here. But that's not what the official definition, well, sort of official definition is. So I ended up having to draw draw it myself by using OpenStreetMap rivers and so on. Um, but yeah, it, it will be useful if there's a high quality polygon set. Um, that, that definitely, but yeah. I, I'm kind of surprised that there is no anything uh, official, I mean, from the, N, the United Nations or any related organization for that. Lots of people have political definitions, um, but the, the geographical definition says things like the boundary of North and South America is the river between Panama and Colombia. But the the uh, the political boundary is not exactly the river anymore because the river's moved, and the same for Russia, Europe. Um, and I was inspired a bit by WGSRPD in looking at places like Greece and saying, "Hey, some of these islands in that are Greek territory are part of Asia because they're further east than Turkish islands. Clearly, they're part of Asia if we're making this kind of map." And very, very well, I couldn't find anyone who'd put that online as a, a map of continents. With so you may find that you make a map of continents when you publish level zero or one of this. May I ask uh, an additional question? Uh, my name is Martin Reinhardt. I work for the uh, Federal Agency of Nature Conservation in Germany. Um, and I would also like to know how the, the geo data, like GPS data, is, is connected to those polygons if they are determined at some uh, point. Well, is... not, not, not in principle. I mean, the the, the system, the, the, the scheme is, uh, is about areas and polygons and not so much about detailed information of uh, species presence or anything like that. And okay. if, if, you, if you check the, the literature, most of the, of the uses of this standard relates to, to high level analysis, uh, to continental and things like that. So uh, I don't think GPS data is the, is the the focus of the main use of this standard. I'm fairly new to the data of uh, GBIF and Tedwick. Um, is this GPS data anywhere used on GBIF? A, a, a lot. I mean, uh, well, Matthew can provide a, a much more detailed answer, but uh, in, in, GBIF, in GBIF, there are literally millions of records based on GPS data. And using the, the Darwin Core standard, you can uh, specify the, the level of precision and the data used. And, well, even you can uh, specify if, if you, for instance, uh, introduce some fuzziness in, in your data to, to protect an endangered species, you can also incorporate that information in, into the, the police data, seeing, saying that we have uh, increased the fuzziness of this data by 10% or 100% or 500%. So all that yeah. is well taken care of by the Darwin Core standard. Okay. Yeah. We have, have to read. Um, 
may I, would you like to stop sharing your screen? Uh, sure. It might be, then I can show you. Oh, I can't look, I can't share my. Uh, yeah, uh, Holly. Doesn't matter, around. doesn't matter too much. Um, yeah, I, I can, just give me a second, I can give you permission. Maybe enable for everyone if it's easy. Yes, you uh, should be good now. Yes. So just an overview, and I suppose this is how, this is one way the standard is eventually used, um, although it's not the most important, which I think is the, the people collecting the data or making the checklists and so on. Um, on GBIF, if you look at the, this is just an occurrence search, and I've searched for including coordinates. So we've got 2.1 billion records with coordinates. Um, and we we use the coordinates to check that this particular record is as it says in Germany. Um, we add issues to say, um, I can't see it, if the country doesn't match the coordinate, if you've given us coordinates in America and said it's China, you've probably got your uh, longitude sign incorrect, for example. Um, and I have a map here, which is our internal debugging tool. Um, and I've just uh, displayed the WGS RPD layer, and that's where I could see that the the thin line here is WGS RPD, and it's uh, quite poor compared to um, others. So I'm hoping for an update on that. Any other questions on GBIP? I'm happy to talk about it. Thank you, Matthew. Thank questions or suggestions? I'll stop playing. There we go. Relevant for the shapes is working out of data source. Am I not loud enough? You seem to be listening hard. Relevant for the uh, shape polygons of countries is working out a data source that can be reshared. Um, it's easy to find low resolution shapes that are under public domain. Um, high resolution shapes often have a um, stricter license. And I think it would be it would be best if the whatever's chosen is um, available for free download and free Definitely. review. Yeah. Um, how, when you say high resolution, what kind of are we talking? Ten kilometers, it, one kilometer it, less. It depends, doesn't it? It depends on the use. For GBIF, I'm happy to have perfect shapes to meters resolution. Because then I can say, yeah, this coordinate that you've not given, you've not told me what region it's in. Well, I can see it's in this region and I can assign it. Um, if the shapes are not as good quality, um, then we, our checks would be things like looking at the coordinate with a five kilometer buffer and saying, yeah, you say it's in either in France the dots in Germany, but it's so close to the border, you probably know best. I'll leave that in France. Um, and the existing shapes, um, they're a bit, yeah, they're really low resolution. So I think we'd have a bit bigger border on that again. Um, people use things like OpenStreetMap. That does have a license on it. Natural uh -huh. Earth. It's not the highest resolution. Um, people use Esri's shapes. Their license is very ambiguous. Um, 
I don't think it's allowed to reshare them. But marine regions, for example, who do the um, ocean and sea polygons, they've reshared those shapes. So who knows? I'm not risking that. So cheap if I'm reshare. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Any additional contribution or thought? Nevertheless, uh, after this meeting and when we have uh, the data ready in SDS, which is basically uh, not too many decisions to take uh, into that, I will share with, with you. Um, and then we can, we can move into the, those uh, additional materials as, such as the, 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 the maps that definitely are needed to make this standard useful. And well, if is you cup of tea, check the, the, the issues to see if uh, the decisions taken uh, agree with uh, your views or you foresee some potential problems into doing that. I did look at a few and I see no problems. Um, I didn't look at every one of them in detail. No, well, there are not too many. Anyway, no. you can see that there are some complicated areas in, in this yes. planet. Um, in general, GBIF doesn't like to give an opinion on. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and that would, of, of course, is one of the principles of neutrality, but sometimes it's difficult to know where the, the neutrality is. Yeah. Uh, it's perhaps easier if you're at an organization that's part well, of the in, in, in a few cases, we we just um, reach the, the decision by the majority of the United Nations countries do yeah. recognize, do not recognize this border. Yes, but then I think there's ones that the UN say are disputed and disputed. A, yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, beautiful term. Um, we have issues where there's, um, it's not a border, it's an entire territory, entire place with an ISO code, and a country says, that's not a territory, that's part of our country, and another place says, no, that's part of our country, it's a whole territory. Um, and in, in many cases, I think you can have, there's ISO codes for what does, is undisputably part of something else. The Channel Islands of Britain, of Jersey and Guernsey, they've got their own code because they've got slightly different tax policy or something. Um, but no one's disputing this since, yeah. I don't know, 500 years ago. Um, so I don't think it's, it shouldn't be controversial to say this place has its separate ISO code. Um, but some people are uncomfortable with that. I'm carefully not naming them. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just checking if there is any comment in the chat. I don't know what my naturalist use. Neither do I. But the rest of my in knowledge, the, they use Google Maps. Google Maps. Yeah, well, there is also the, the issue of stability. I mean, if we uh, produce, um, let's say, a file with uh, with limits, with polygons, it has to be stable. And uh, I guess Google Maps will change things according yeah. to I think so. Um, yeah, well, in in the in the work done so far with the with the issues, we have been building a a file with with the changes because we need to, of course, keep track of of the changes and then to be able to to produce uh, uh, translations between the the old standard and the new one. But yeah, 
that is pretty much uh, I mean, common sense and automatic that will be done. How often do you think the standard would be updated? I know it's been 20 years, but- It's been 20 years. Uh, 20 um, years is a bit too much, I think. Yeah. Uh, hard to say, be yeah. because it, it depends on, well, on the, on the uses and as well of, on the fluidity of the, of the boundaries. And well, is everyone familiar with marine regions? Or is Let anyone me. familiar? Let me, I'm finding a link. Um, this is what GBIF use for um, when we say something is in Canada, we're including also that exclusive economic zone, the exactly. place they can do fishing and oil drilling and so on um, around, around Canada. Um, and you can see on that map, there's different colors. There's blue and red and green and various forms of disputes and treaties, disagreements. Um, they update that, I think, more or less every year or two years as, as they get better data and as countries um, align their borders and make agreements. But I think some of their uses are much more requiring the political correct knowledge that they're saying who who can do fishing who can we restrict who might be restricted from this natural area also but we update the GBIF index of shapes from that for the marine index every well whenever it's updated and uh, what about international waters um they have another uh, um, Nick, I remember Nic Nicola mentioning some standard, but uh, I can remember which one. I can't remember where to find it on the website, but it, there's the IHO standard, which is the International Hydrographic yeah. Organization. Um, no, well, the, the IHO is more like a, uh, defining the boundaries between oceans. Um, I've worked with the IHO standard a bit and um, also like getting the data from uh, marine regions. And I also discovered a couple of, of issues in there, um, I guess it here's. Um, so yeah, yeah uh, that, then that's the part I'm familiar with. And uh, uh, so um, if you see, if, if you zoom in, oh yeah, you, you see it in, on, on the map quite well. For instance, the Caribbean. You see that the Caribbean has a kind of different shape compared to the Gulf of Mexico, and yeah. um, so the specification just says, "Yeah, well, it's it's everything." Uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico ends uh, at the line between this point in Mexico and this point in Cuba, and so this just defines that line, and everything south of that is uh, um, the Caribbean, for instance. And the same for the for the shape; it's uh, mm. quite an old standard. I've uh, I've went through the the old publication. It's like a, a I think from is it from the seventies or something like that. Um, so. And um, uh, hold on. And um, but but that works quite well for for the borders between saying okay uh, something is like in the Gulf of Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico is part of the the North Atlantic Ocean. Uh, which is then in turn part of the, the Atlantic Ocean. So it has some small layering uh, in there, uh, some small hierarchies, um, but it, it does not define the, uh, like the borders to the countries. So that's what the, the EECs are for. Yeah, so we, marine regions produce a data set, which is basically this political one intersected with the the IHO one, yeah. Um, or you, well, we just do that ourselves. If you want to know what's in Bahamas and in North Atlantic, filter for both. Well, no, I don't I... believe that this data set, the IHO one, changes. I think the definitions are st static. I just try to call up the, the old publication link that I had saved for the, the old IHO publication. 
Uh, but the link is not working anymore. Let's... IHO seems to have three versions, 2005, 2017, and 2018. So some work has been done probably. Okay. The original publication is 1953. Hmm. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah. uh, I'm I'm is looking it... at the Marine Regions uh, downloads page. It has like a IHOC area section. Okay. Yeah. And that has those three. Yeah. I've, I've worked with that one, and it's um, uh, uh, as far as I remember, a couple of the known issues for version two were reported by me, and uh, not the one for version three though. But yeah, uh, it, it took like a couple of months, but eventually they, they updated the issues. It's 100 megabytes. And I think that should mean that those are very good resolution. What's the, the, the length? Yes. I put OpenStreetMap on. Hmm. It's, it, it is, uh, especially if the compared between version two and version three. For, yeah. you know, I, I know that they really went down with the resolution. Yeah, ran some um, yeah, analyzation tools and, and checks on it. And at some point, it said to me that the um, uh, uh, um, Caribbean Sea connected to the Pacific. And I thought, okay, that must be some weird error until I realized, no, they have actually mapped the, the inside of the Panama Canal as okay. well. So, uh, which is why that <laughs> uh, uh, caused the issue. So, yeah, oh, yes. they, they are uh, quite sufficiently well done. Yeah, I suppose if that counts as C, then wow. But, yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. So, that little snippet gave me the error in my end. Oh, the. the thing in my, my plausibility checks where I thought, hold on a second. Okay, um, I'm taking note of this, these links and add them as resources to the EHA page, because I think this might help people to understand the issue and to have some micro information on this. So thank you. I found the PDF, the scan of the original um, uh, from from uh, fifty three. Uh, so it's uh, that's all there there is in the the official standard. Just says okay, the certain areas and where they uh, connect to others. Um, so where are the boundaries and. So will the marine uh, part of this standard be probably more detailed or as detailed? Well, as, uh, I, uh, I assume that they, they will, I mean, I know that, that they, they want to, to build a, a hierarchical system. And you have to remember that the, the idea is at the end to have areas of comparable size. Okay. So that will introduce some constraints in, in the way they produce these levels. Yeah, that's. I think that's level four. Level three is the le level three? four. It's just for small in, in the terrestrial domain. It's just for okay. small things such as enclaves and islands. So it's level level four. Where, where the F, sorry, level three. So where therefore is is put to to make areas of comparable size. To okay, understand. Okay. Well, um, thank you for, the, for these contributions. Anyone else? Um, uh, do you meet regularly and when do you meet? How do no, we um, well, so far, no. But, but uh, once we move into the, the, the task group uh, zone, definitely we will have to first mm -hmm to the, the limit or to identify the people interested and then to, to convene uh, meetings to just as checkpoints in, the, in advance. But so far, because it uh, was mostly, I, I mean, um, not, to make, not to make decisions, but showing and digging in the, we haven't held those 
we had one meeting at the when the, the group was created, but that was it. But taking taking note of your names uh, for uh, future interactions. Well, if um, no one wants to, to say anything at, the, at this moment, we bring to a, to a close to this, this working session and you will get news from, from me soon. Thank you very much for, for your participation. Thank Is you. there a Slack group or something I should be joining?